right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is uh, the final part of our respiration unit. It's all about gas exchange uh, and pretty much how the gases travel from one part of the body to the next. So let's just uh, do a little recap here of what diffusion is. Diffusion is the movement of a solute, in our, this case it's a dissolved gas, from high concentration to low concentration. So they want to move, if there's an area of low or high concentration, they want to move into the area with, with low. Uh, the movement of gas from alveoli to the capillaries of the circulatory system is external respiration. So we breathe in the, the air, here's our lungs, here's our blood. Uh, going back and forth here is uh, what external fertilization is. And these two things, PCO2 and PO2, basically, basically refer to the partial pressures. Uh, of these two gases and it all depends on what the partial pressure is in order to determine which direction that they're going to be flowing in. If the partial pressure of CO2 is high in one area it will try to go to the area that's low through diffusion. Okay, So you can think about PCO2 and PO2 as just basically meaning how much stuff there is. Okay so external fertil er, fertilization, external respiration uh, these are your two scenarios. Uh, if the blood in the capillaries have a higher CO2 than the alveoli, then the CO2 is going to diffuse out of the blood and into the lungs so we can exhale it. And if this is the uh, alveoli here, oops, we can pen here, of the lungs, and this is the capillaries of the blood, uh, if we're looking at this here and there's more CO2 building up in the blood, being uh, ready to uh, be taken out by the lungs, since we're inhaling, there wouldn't be much in the uh, alveoli. So if the partial pressure of CO2 compared to the partial pressure of CO2 in the lungs, so this would be high, this would be low. So what would happen is it would diffuse across the membrane into the lungs where it can be exported out when we exhale. If the alve alveoli have higher O2 than the capillaries, the O2 is going to be diffusing into the lungs uh, and into our blood. And so that's basically after we inhale. All right, so when we breathe in, we're breathing in a lot of oxygen. So we'll say these are our oxygen molecules. And since in our blood, we've already transported the oxygen to our cells, there's not much oxygen left in our blood in comparison to what's in our lungs. And so since the PO2 uh, compared to the PO2 is different, this is a lot higher, this is lower. So what's going to happen is it diffuses across the membrane from our alveoli into our blood and then it can be transported to our cells. Pause that to get that down. Internal respiration, so this is where it actually happens uh, just near the cells, so this is the movement of the gas from the capillaries into all the cells of the body. So pause that. And then internal respiration uh, scenarios are if the cells have a higher CO2 than the capillaries, the CO2 is going to diffuse out of the cells and into the blood. And here's a picture of our cell and blood system. So CO2 is going to be produced because of cellular respiration and it's going to want to leave. But since the uh, partial pressure of CO2 is high and in the blood it's going to be low because it's already been transported out, that causes or allows our CO2 to diffuse across this membrane from the cell into our blood. And then if the blood has higher O2, the O2 is going to diffuse from the blood into the cells. So here's a picture of our cell and our blood. Uh, if we have oxygen in, <laughs> oxygen, uh, that's being transported uh, from our lungs and our blood. So if there's high partial O2, compared to the cell and there would be low partial O2 because it's all being used up for cellular respiration. Well, what's going to happen is it's going to diffuse across that membrane and go in from our blood uh, into our cell. Okay, so you take your time and jot that down there. Pause it now. And then the, here's the big picture idea. How does the gas actually travel between the lungs and the cell? We just said that it diffused into from the lungs into the blood and then blood from the cells but what what gets it from the actual lungs to the cells well it's in the blood like we mentioned so let's just look at each gas individually 
So oxygen, in order to transport it, it attaches to hemoglobin on the red blood cells. And once that oxygen is attached to hemoglobin, we call that hemoglobin oxyhemoglobin. Okay? Oops, sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can pause that. And then for carbon dioxide, there's three ways that it can be transported. Okay? The first way is just as CO2 dissolved right in the plasma. And just a little bit of that CO2 in our body gets transported that way. <coughs> Excuse me. The next one is through attached hemoglobin, or sorry, attaching to hemoglobin. And this is what we call carb amino hemoglobin. So this is where CO2 binds to hemoglobin just as oxygen would. And again, some of this CO2 is transported this way, but the majority of our hemo or of our hydrogen, oh my God, the majority of our carbon dioxide is actually dissolved in the blood as a bicarbonate ion. And in order to do that, it needs to undergo a chemical reaction. So here's CO2 and H2O. CO2 and H2O are produced by the cell. We need to get rid of the CO2. Once it leaves the cell, it's changed into bi uh, carbonic acid uh, using an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase, which would be right there. This only exists as just a split second, so this is carbonic acid, uh, before it's continued to break down into bicarbonate and a hydrogen ion. Okay, so we mentioned this yesterday in class, where this H plus is a byproduct uh, of carbon dioxide being broken down. So if there's lots of H pluses, uh, it usually indicates there, there was a lot of CO2, and so that's why our medulla detects that H plus uh, instead of our CO2 uh, to indicate carbon dioxide. Okay, so you can pause that. And then finally, uh, with all these H pluses being produced, we need to have some sort of a buffer, otherwise our pH uh, will go out of whack. So we like to have it around 7.4, and if it doesn't, a couple different disorders can uh, arise. The first is alkalosis, which means that your pH is going to be uh, increasing, uh, which alternate way of saying that is because it's a decrease in H plus. So if our H plus in our blood uh, gets too low, which means the pH is getting too high, it can cause dizziness and twitching. And this is called alkalosis because your blood is becoming alkaline. Uh, alternatively, if you have acidosis, this is a result of hypoventilation, okay? And this is an increase in the H+, plus, which means a decrease in our pH. Uh, and these ones are a little more severe because you can go into a coma and die. Uh, and then a way to kind of remedy this and make sure that it stays intact is that hemoglobin can also bind to H+. Plus. And then we call that HHB. Okay, so a decrease in H plus once it binds. Okay, so it can regulate the pH a little bit better. So we're just going to be going all over this uh, process tomorrow. It's quite a little bit more in depth than what we've kind of said here. So, but this should give you a good introduction to what we're going to be discussing. Okay, any questions that you do have, please jot them down.